everyone. So originally today I was going to do an interval, but then I solved a problem from a math contest and I found it so amazing that I, made, that I just had to make a video about it. So needless to say, that video is coming out tomorrow or later today. And today we'll talk about this problem. It was problem five from, from the purple comment math meet of 2020 and it was on the high school test. And it goes as follows. We want to find the maximal possible value of this expression right here a cubed over b squared c plus b cubed over c squared a plus c cubed over a squared b whole thing squared where a b and c are elements of the real numbers and they are all non-zero and they satisfy the following a times the cube root of a over b plus b times the cube root of b over c plus c times the cube root of c over a is equal to zero so without further ado let's get into it so first of all I would like to focus on this expression right here that we are given. And what we want to do is we would like to get rid of all of those queries. And here's how we are going to do so. So first of all, we will let x be a times the cube root of a over b. Next we'll let y be, the, be b times the cube root of b over c. And we'll, we'll let z be c times the cube root of c over a. But then what I would like to do is I would like to write all of the a, b, and c that are outside the cube root inside the cube root. And we can do so by raising a to the third power and bringing it in. So we'll have a times a cube, which is a to the fourth. Similarly here, we'll have a b to the fourth and a c to the fourth. So then we get by definition so by definition like this we get x plus y plus z is equal to zero and now we will cube both sides of this equality so we get x plus y plus z whole thing q is equal to zero q which is zero but then we'll expand this whole expression and it will give us, and this is going to be very long, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3x squared z plus 3y squared x plus 3y squared z plus 3z squared x plus 3z squared y plus 6xyz. I believe I am correct. Okay, and now we will focus on this bit right here. So, let me do this in other colors. So, we know that x plus y plus z is equal to zero. And this will be very useful to what we are going to do here. So, here for these two terms, we'll factor out a 3x squared times y plus, y plus z. And now, y plus z is precisely equal to negative x by this, by this equality, because if we subtract x to, from both sides, we get y plus z is equal to negative x. So we get 3x squared times negative x, which is equal to negative 3x cubed. And then, we can do a similar thing for these two terms. So for these, we will factor out a 3y squared, so we get 3y squared times x plus z. But x plus z is precisely negative y by a similar argument as earlier, so we get negative 3y cubed. And for these two terms, let me do this over it like this, we get 3y squared times x plus y. Why? No, sorry, 3z squared. And then x plus y is precisely equal to negative z. Therefore, this thing is equal to negative 3z cubed. Okay, and now we can see that collecting like terms, this whole expression is equal to negative 2x cubed 
negative yeah negative two x cube because x cube minus three x cube minus two y cube minus two z cubed plus six x y z and keep in mind that this whole thing is equal to zero and now what we will do is we will divide everything by two so these two will cancel out and here i sorry for z and here we'll have a three instead of a six and then we will add x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed to both sides so here so we will have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed uh, plus z cubed is equal to 3xyz but then we can plug in all of the original values sorry i forgot to erase the c right there we can plug all of the values here that we have got for x y and z into this equation so we get x cubed is equal to a to the fourth power over b y cubed is equal to b to the fourth power over c and z cubed is equal to c to the fourth power over a and then for the right hand side we'll have three times okay we have a product of cube roots and the product of cube roots is equal to the cube root of products this is by exponent property so we get the cube root of okay we have a to the fourth over b times b to the fourth over c times c to the fourth over a but then a to the fourth over a is a cube b to the fourth over b is b cube and c to the fourth over c is c cube so we get the cube root of a cubed b cubed c cubed but then cube root of a cubed c cubed b cubed c cubed is simply a b c again by exponent properties so here we get this relationship right here a to the fourth over b plus b to the fourth over c is equal to c to the fourth over, plus c to the fourth over a is equal to 3abc and now how does this do uh, how is this good to us well what we want to do is risk we want to we want to use the cauchy schwarz inequality on this expression right here to get an expression of this kind so let's do that so we get a cubed over b squared c whole thing squared plus b cubed over c squared a wait there are not all these words plus b cubed over c squared a plus c cubed over a squared b whole thing squared and now this will be equal to and then as i said earlier we will we want to use the cauchy schwarz inequality and let me do this in red for those who don't know what the cauchy schwarz inequality is it says that so let me write this the cauchy schwarz inequality so it states that if you have two sequences of real numbers ui and vi then you get that the sum as i goes from 1 to n of ui vi squared is less than or equal to the sum as i goes from 1 to n of ui squared time the sum as i goes from 1 to n of vi squared okay and now as we can see we have a sum and it is squared so so this means it's a good fit for this inequality and now what we want to do is we have we want to break each term into two terms which multiply to the original term and such that the squares of one of the smaller product t terms will give us one of those right here and the way to do this is precisely a square over square root of b times a over bc squared
square root of b plus b squared over square root of c times b over ac square root of c plus c squared over square root of a times c over a b square root of a whole thing squared and you will see what i mean in a second and now as i said earlier we have a sum of products of two kind of sequences and by the cauchy schwarz inequality this will be less than or equal to wait let me rewrite this below so this will be less than or equal to by the cauchy schwarz inequality to the sum of these squared times the sum of these squares so we'll have a to the fourth over b plus b to the fourth over c plus c to the fourth over a these three multiplied by this squared a squared over b squared times c cubed plus b squared over a squared times c cubed plus let me think c cubed or c squared sorry over a cubed times b squared good and now we know the value of this expression it is exactly 3 abc so we get that this is equal to 3 abc times a squared over b squared c cubed like this plus wait that did i do a mistake oh sorry it's b cubed c squared so we got uh, that seemed a little bit no, no, let me check if i did okay i'm all, I'm all right plus so it's b cubed c squared plus b cubed uh, b squared over a squared c cubed plus c squared over a cubed b squared and now what we will do is we will multiply everything through by a b c so we get three times okay on the first term we'll get a cubed over b squared c on the second term we'll get b cubed over a times c squared which i will write as c squared a plus c cubed all over let me think a squared b but then this is exactly the expression that we have inside the squares there so the, so what we will do now is we will let x be this expression a cubed over b squared c plus b cubed over c squared a plus c cubed over a squared b and now we get that this expression squared or x squared is less than or equal to 3 times this expression or 3x and now subtracting both 3x from both sides and factoring out an x we get x times x minus 3 is equal to uh, is less than or equal to zero and now basically what we want to do is we want to find the largest value of x that satisfies this inequality which means which means it will also be the largest value of x that satisfies this inequality and then we'll, we will only need to square that value of x because we didn't want to maximize this expression we wanted to maximize this expression but square okay so let's take a look at this expression so to find so for this inequality to be satisfied we want this whole thing to be less than or equal to zero in other words we want things to be negative so let's draw ourselves a number line so right there this is big i remember matt parker did an asset like this in his squircle video it's like a, a number line and then at the end it says big okay so we get this is zero here and this is three here let's say and then if x is greater, is greater than three 
Then let's say it's equal to 4, we get 4 times 1, which is positive. So right there is going to be positive. If x is between 0 and 3, let's plug in 1, for example, to see what we, mean, uh, what we want. We get 1 times negative 2, which is obviously less than 0. So between 0 and 3, it is negative. And if x is less than 0, for example, x is equal to negative 2, we get negative 2 times negative 5, which is 10, which is obviously greater than 0. Therefore, on this side, it will be positive, which means for this inequality to be satisfied, x must be between 0 and 3. But then, since we want to maximize x, we want the largest value of x for which this inequality holds. Therefore, x is equal to 3, which means x squared is equal to 9. Therefore, this value, 9, is the maximum value of this expression, which means it is officially our answer. So yeah, that was a nice contest problem. So this is your video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like share this video. Bye.